All right, guys, it's time for the Death Knight, the good old troll boy. Now, what we're doing here is we're going to show off the Necro Lord abilities for Frost Death Knight Unholy, and I'll switch over to Blood as well, showing you all the different specs and how that looks. All right, going through all the DK specs, starting with the all-powerful two-handed Frost Death Knight. All right, the abilities as we know and love, Fr Flesh Craft, which is the one that you've probably seen on my Shaman video. Check those down in the description um, about the Covenant abilities. This is... Forms a shield of flesh and bone around you for four seconds, and it's a channel that absorbs uh, damage equal to 20% of your maximum health. Channeling your corpses claims their essence to grow the shield up to 50% of your maximum health. This is most effective against powerful enemies. Okay, so that's fine. But again, you know, some of the things we talked about even before was that this is a channel ability, which makes it tough to use in combat or if you're getting hit or stuff like that. It's also a two-minute cooldown, so you'd think it'd be a rotation that you could possibly use as a defensive, but it's a little tough to get that shield up. So if you even get partial charge, like I did partial charge, I got up to 2K. Now it's going to go to about 4K for 20% of the health, but I at least got something. But is it really worth it? I don't, I'm not really, it's hard to say. And where does it fit in? So guys, put down in the comments below what you think this could be useful for in the new x pack Mythic Plus, etc. Now the other one, now I've heard a lot of hype about this ability too. Sprout an additional limb for 12 seconds. Every two seconds, it deals 630 shadow damage to all nearby enemies and pulls an enemy to your location if they are further than eight yards from you. That's going to be a pretty interesting one, especially for PvP, I think. For PvE, I don't think this is going to be, if you think about it, like Mythic Plus, uncontrollable pulling. Um, I'm not sure about that. It's only for 12 seconds on a two-minute cooldown. Looks like it's instant, no cost, of course. So, kind of interesting, but... Uh, but to be honest, like pulling mobs for every 12 seconds is a little odd, uh, especially if you're just going to be doing like mythic pluses and you're trying to do precise pulls. Um, so I, I don't know. The only other thing that I could think it could be useful for is doing interrupts on mobs if they're about eight, you know, t over 10 yards away. If they're that far away, it could just start pulling them and you could move and then it would pull them again. But again, it's only 12 seconds, so it's not that much. So let's go ahead. We have our, our pre-bubble up here, which I think that's one thing it will be used for is pre-bubbling. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, kill some mobbies. Now, this tower is um, this is starting at level 1, which is fine. But And let me know down below, guys, if you guys want me to do more tower runs, just pure tower runs or clipped tower runs, just to see the highlights of different builds. Happy to do that. I'm not sure how exciting that content is. You guys let me know, and I'll, and I'll make it happen. Now, I haven't used the ability yet. Let's go ahead and use it here. It's going to be, remember, Abomination's Limb. There it goes. And there's the limb. Whoa. Okay, so we're kind of we're kind of running, so it pulls. Okay, it just it just is actually just killing them. Wow. Okay, so it actually was doing some damage more than I thought. Oh, it pulled the bot. Oh, it pulled one of these. Even, okay, so it even pulls inanimate objects. So that's interesting. Not that that's going to be useful anywhere other than the tower. Now that was a pretty again. That's twelve seconds. You didn't get to see too much there. the The animation on me was pretty cool. And it looks like, you know, this is going to be class specific. So that's going to be exactly the same for all the different specs. We'll switch it up, but, um, you know, that is what it is. Now, the other thing we'll do is use flesh craft around all of these mobs. You'll be able to see what it does. Uh, I will click this off. So flesh craft. Let's see if it's up oh, there. The essences is being sucked in. I can't move while it's being channeled, which is a little unfortunate. If I could move, I could move near other mobs if I realized I was too far away. Now, let's, this is a two-minute cooldown, so we'll wait for that to come back. We'll just start clearing some more stuff. We'll try to get to a big pack because I do think that could be useful in a lot of casters. So, like, let's say this is the mob. If I move within out of, the, out of a 10-yard range, right? No, it's out of eight yards. Then it will yank it towards me. And it looks like when it yanks it, it might do damage. To all and oh no, just doing AOE damage in general and 600 and 612, uh, sorry, 640 damage to all nearby enemies and pulling them every, uh, every two seconds. I mean, that's not bad. If you look at um, Remorseless Winter, Remorseless Winter is doing double the, that damage, but it's every let's see, damage over eight seconds. Oh no, it's over eight seconds. So that's actually doing more ticking damage than Remorseless Winter is. If we can look up Remorseless Winter's ticking, okay, so it's hitting for about 100 and 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 20 which is not really anything to get too excited about abomination limb is hitting for wow six times that well about five times that for it's going to do that every every two seconds or 12 seconds so it's going to take uh six times Rem um remorseless winter is going to tick probably eight times 
<clears throat> so this is just like Remorseless Winter, actually. So stacking that with Remorseless Winter is probably going to be pretty devastating, especially for big AoE pulls. Now let's go ahead and get up here. We're going to go ahead and use it. I'm not going to use Remorseless Winter. Let's just see how much damage it does. So now I'm just kind of... You'll, you'll see him pull stuff in. Yep. He tried to get pulled. Yeah, it's, so it's pulling an RNG mob. So if I put Remorseless Winter on top, it's going to help me cleave. If I used... Oh, Breath of Cinder Gosa. It would be even crazier, Cleave. If I stack those all together, it'd be pretty nice. Breath of Cinder Gosa is not... Oh, it's on a too many cooldown as well. Let's go ahead and stack that up and see how crazy that can get. Because now we're talking about stacking a lot of frontal... Uh, a lot of AoE abilities. I use Remorseless Winter. I use Breath of Cinder Gosa. I will use Abomination Limb. And it'll be a big AoE blizzard of doom. All right, so this time we're going to use Breath of Sindragosa, we're going to use Abomination's Limb, and we're going to use Remorseless Winter all together because that's all AoE cleaving. So we're going to go ahead and get up here. Let's go ahead and pull, do a huge pull, use a damage reduction. Okay, this is probably as big as I'm going to be able to get here. So we're going to use Remorseless, Abominations, and then Breath. And then everything's just going to get shredded. And things are getting yanked into the cleave as well, which could be useful. Oh, just pulled in another mob. That seems to be pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Now, that was only a few mobs, and I'm on, I am on on a low, low, low level floor. But to be honest with you, I'm just thinking about how that could be so strong. I didn't even use Pillar as well, or even put down DND. Not that that's going to do that much. Now, let's go ahead and switch over to Unholy to see what else could work together with that. All right, on to Unholy. Using these two abilities, Fleshcraft, we all know it. I don't know if we all love it. Two minutes. We'll go ahead and soak this shield. We're going to try to do a big pull with Abomination's Limb and see what type of AoE we can get. Because as we all know now, it's pulling mobs in. It's doing some uh, pulsing damage around you to all nearby enemies, which is very important to call out because the AoE has been adjusted for... Um, you know, every single class for hitting five, you know, instead of hitting all the mobs, now it's hitting five, now it's hitting eight, now it's hitting six. So that's just something good to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here with some cleave. Now, one of the ways you can cleave is get the DND down, start festering, and then popping all those together. So let's go ahead and put it down. We're going to pop the Abomination's Limb. I'm going to be... Okay, everything's just dying. <laughs> everything's just dying super fast. Okay, maybe it's because my strength's been built up or what have you. But yeah, it's definitely doing a lot of work. So that actually does a lot of damage, especially because it's pulsing AoE. That's pretty nice for Unholy because it doesn't necessarily... I don't know. In terms of AoE, Unholy doesn't necessarily have a huge... Uh, toolkit for that. I mean, it does have the DND spreading, uh, you know, spreading and popping the festerings, but other than that, like if I put this down and then I scourge strike, it's going to pop that. I can, put, of course, my uh, virulent plague is on every, or my outbreak, which puts virulent plague on everything, is fine, but uh, it could be pretty useful for Unholy, I think. But it, again, it's a two minute cooldown. It's a pretty big cooldown, but it does seem to do a pretty good amount of damage. It's not quite as remarkable as, as with, uh, Frost, I think, it, Frost AoE ability is going to be out the, uh, 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 just crazy, crazy, the biggest pulse ever in Mythic Plus, I think Frost is now kind of positioned pretty well with this, but with that being said, now, now Blood, again, listen, nothing's going to change here, you know, the only thing I'll say with to you is that the Fleshcraft, maybe it's going to be more useful or more, viewed as more useful for the tank, but because it does soak a percentage of your HP, right? So if it 20% of HP of a Blood DK is a lot more than 20% HP of a Frost DK. All right, so using this on Blood DK, we can see if I pop it, it's going to start doing some pretty big damage, some pretty big cleave, which could be useful in um, in Mythic Pluses potentially, but it doesn't last for all that long. Now, it did... <laughs> everything's dead. But uh, with that being said, I mean, it, it pulses for a pretty good amount of damage. I don't know how big it will be once we get to the max level of uh, 60, but uh, it seems pretty decent. But with that being said, guys, that's going to be it for the Death Knight Necro Lord review. We'll be doing more stuff on stream every day, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and uh, anything that you guys really want to see. So, guys, come by the stream or put it down in the comments what you want to see next, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. We show up in the party. Show up